Hey folks, it's Art Wolf. Welcome. We're going to do a quick nickel tour, as it were, of the new place. Um, we are now pretty much safely moved in. Basically, all the big stuff's done. There's a few things that need to be sorted and a few additional pieces of furniture that need to be procured at some point, and you'll see that. I'm just going to show you the main room because this is where all the, the, all the fun and living is going to occur. Um, so we will start here with the kitchen. Very happy with the kitchen. We've got nice high ceilings, although I'm not a big fan of that necessarily. Um, we've got some liquor. We have a um, glass cooktop, which I'd rather have gas, but I'd also rather not have a gas bill, so that's cool. We have a big kitchen island. Um, didn't come with the stools. I procured my own stools. This will be the RPG table when RPGs, or if RPGs ever happen here, um, as soon as I get some more stools. And then some other fancy chair to put back here for the Game Master. Um, not a huge place. Technically, this is a studio apartment, but there is a separate bedroom, which I will not show you because... Um, it's not as neatly organized as I would like. And um, the reason why it's considered a studio, even though it has a bedroom, is because the bedroom has no windows. Um, I have all the lights on. It is dark out. As you can see, the lighting conditions in here are amazing. Um, this is the little temporary gaming area. There is a larger table that is going to replace this one. This is big enough to fit one war game map, but not much more at all. Um, but I have a larger table that's going to come in at some point to replace this thing and obviously some slightly fancier chairs. Um, some of you may have seen pictures of the gaming shelves. We have all of the war games in this room and a decent chunk of the RPGs. Uh, some of the RPGs are actually shelved in the bedroom. This is next to the big balcony door here. Um, this is the Traveler and Chaosium shelf. Um, so this is all RPGs. I guess that's not quite true because we have the Traveler customizable card game and the Babylon 5 miniatures game and the Star Trek Starship Combat Simulator, uh, but it's, it's all sci-fi-ish stuff, um, so that's other than the Chaosium on the bottom. Um, and that's more or less arbitrary. I did want Traveler on kind of its own shelf. As you can see, I have quite a bit of Traveler. That's why I've done some videos on it. Um, and have I ever done videos? Yes, I've done some Traveler videos. Not that many. I need to do more. Um, and then over here, we have the Great Wall of Games, as I am picturing it. Um, so what this is, is Kallax bookshelves from Ikea. There are two 4x4s on the bottom. This is, of course, mounted to the wall. You, you really have to mount those to the wall. Um, and then two 3x4s on top. This was a pain in the dick to put up. But it's done and it now is home to all of the war games and a good chunk of the RPGs. <coughs> it's not... <coughs> Excuse me, I'm getting over a respiratory attack that I had yesterday. So it's amazing I'm able to talk this much. Um, so these are more or less sorted by period, except somewhat arbitrarily for the Avalon Hill and Victory Game stuff at the top. We have my two Spitzer titles, um, some trays and stuff. And then some oddballs. Colin spills up at the top, too. Um, and that's kind of an artifact of the way I started putting the stuff on the shelf, more or less. Um, so this may well get rearranged. The war games are basically organized, except for the ASL stuff. The goal is to have these six compartments down here be the ASL stuff. As you can see, that's not quite there yet. There's some Pathfinder in there, some stuff that's got to get moved around. Pathfinder's probably going in the auxiliary gaming shelf in the bedroom, the... Black containers on the ground floor here are magazines. Um, almost all the magazines, but I'll get it all in here. I guess the goal here for RPGs is to get D&D, Traveler, Chaosium in the main room, and then whatever else I can fit, um, and there'll be some kind of priority list as to what goes first. I'd like to get Rollmaster in the front room. I'd like to get Ars Magica in the front room. I'd like to get Harn in, and Tecamel in the front room, um, but we'll see what actually works out. Uh, the second shelf in the bedroom is not organized yet because not all the books have arrived. The book books, not the, not the games. The games are all here. Um, as you can see, I got a halfway decent D&D &D collection. Um, certainly, if I had never unloaded any D&D &D stuff, I would have a f better D&D &D collection. 
Um, but it's more than adequate. That's all the fifth edition stuff there. If I were running D&D now, I would use that. So we're all good. We have the general war games start up here with the Ancients. And I have chosen to start first with uh, one of my favorite series, Great Battles of History, uh, which I don't have all of them, but I have recently added, at long last, that. Great Battles of Julius Caesar to the collection, thanks to a buddy of mine. Um, I'm hearing little birds tell me that that will be uh, getting reprinted in the not terribly distant future. But from Ancients, we move on to my relatively few medieval games. There's a couple more of those on the way. We got my relatively small number of American, uh, American Revolution games. We have some Napoleonics. I do not have an enormous collection of that. Um, here's kind of Age of Sail games I put in here. SPI stuff, by the way, is up at the top too. Um, and then some bins. Those little plastic bins are where it's going to be sorted. Now this was kind of a surprise uh, because I was like, eh, I'm not really that into Civil War a few years ago. And now I got all this Civil War stuff. Um, and there's a couple odds and ends that are like S&T uh, Civil War games that I don't have in this shot. Um, so yeah, I've got a decent number of Civil War games at this point. Um, probably more than I need, but yeah, you know, can't have too many. Um, here is, of course, the Der Weltkrieg series for World War I. Um, so I've got two cubes of World War I, actually, if we count reds, too, which, you know, maybe we do. It started during World War I. Um, Churchill is in a place totally at random based on that's where the box would fit um, so that I could fit World in Flames and its counters um, in one cube. Uh, we start with the strategic level World War II games over here with Gathering Storm, uh, its follow-on game World at War, Unconditional Surrender, and the two Totaler Krieg games. Um, there will be a new edition of, to of Axis Empires combining both Totaler Krieg and Dicenso. Um, I think next year um, we have uh, the couple volumes in the No Retreat series. Uh, I got to tell you, I'm not sure why I own three games in this series because I can't make heads or tails of it. I've tried with the Russian Front one, and I think there's a really good game there. I just have not successfully managed to figure it out yet. Um, here's the proof that I do not actually own that many OCS games. This is the three, Tunisia 2, Beyond the Rhine, and Sicily 2. I do have at least one, well, I do have one more on order which is Hungarian Rhapsody, which is up for pre-order. Uh, we have Thunder in the East, recently added to the collection, now available from GMT. Uh, we have a couple of shrink wrap games. This is very unusual for me, but I bought them at Origins. I'm like, uh, well, shit, I'm moving soon. Um, I don't see any reason to unbox these. And there is no way you can get those back in those boxes uh, once they're punched either. So I'm not super motivated to get those unboxed, un unshrink wrapped. Um, I do really want to play the TCS series. Both of those are, and Black Wednesday, are in the Tactical Combat series. That's a series that I've been interested in for a long time, um, since, you know, back in the days before I stopped wargaming for a while. Um, and I just, I now have these three titles, so I got a selection of TCS games to play. Um, here we move into um, World War II West Front, um, I think Sicily. There's a copy of Invasion Sicily. I believe that's in that red box up at the top. That's the Vance von Bory Sicily game. It's actually quite a neat game. Uh, somewhat underappreciated, if you ask me. Uh, we've got, of course, the Great Battle for Normandy, which was more or less my grail game for a long time. I paid through the nose for it. Um, I have, But I have played it, and it's it's pretty good. Um, Holland 44, Normandy 44, Ardennes 44 for Mark Simonich. I really like those games. I'm looking very much forward to Stalingrad 42, which GMT permitting should be showing up any time. We have next, we move into the Goss series. This is, I should mention this, because this has actually drawn a lot of attention lately. Uh, this is the Death Ride series from Grognard Simulations. Uh, this is Death Ride Arras, which is France 1940. Um, and this is the same series where they're doing, like, all of Kursk at the company level, as batshit as that sounds. Um, they do that at uh, Concert World Expo in Tempe. Um, this is a good uh, entry point into the series, I am told. I'd like to get that to a table at some point. Um, it's still pretty big, honestly, even if it's not uh, 30,000 counters like the other thing. Now, of course, we have the Goss series. This is another one. People ask, of course, well, have you played all these? And no, obviously not. And how dare you ask? 
Um, but you know, I've played. If if you if you count, have I played it as having played a game in the series? Then I've played a decent number of these things, actually. Um, you know, there's work to be done, and based on the amount of space that I actually have, um, you know, I don't have the room for that many more games. Um, we've got, of course, Labyrinth. There's a new expansion for that coming out at some point. We have um, the next war games. Um, there's a reprint of Next War Korea on its way fairly soon. I kind of skipped the modern warfare. Gandhi is in a place where, well, it's next to Fire in the Lake. Um, I don't have a better idea. If I started in 1917, it would be in with the World War I stuff. I should actually switch places between that and Churchill, thinking about it. That would actually be a great idea. I will do that as soon as the video is over. Then we get into the actual sci-fi sci -fi stuff with Space Empires. I do have the second expansion for Space Empires, uh, but... Um, the box is in the closet because you know, there's nothing in it. I got everything into two boxes. In my relatively slender Starfleet Battles collection, this is all the Starfleet Battles stuff I ever need. If I'm going to play Starfleet Battles, it's going to be with Starfleet Battles people, and it won't be a problem. Uh, for RPGs, and I think I'm not going to walk through RPGs right now. I will show you the ASL stuff, though. And I just started kind of picking through this and trying to organize it a little bit today. Um, we've got... So the multi-man big boxes I've got right here. A couple other things from multi-man over here. Starter kits over here. The phone is annoying me over there. And then we've got some ASL boxes from Avalon Hill. Truthfully, what is probably going to happen with this, the sticky notes are just to take, to, because to, to, I bought somebody's ASL collection last year. And after having unloaded my ASL collection, there was almost a one-to-one -one correspondence between the collection that I bought and the collection that I unloaded years ago, except that I had a bunch of the historical modules that had been released up to that time, and this collection did not have those. But I got a good price on it, so I don't care. And the big thing that I wanted is back now anyway as part of Red Factories. Um, that would have been Red Barricades. So the SL stuff's got to get reorganized. I need more of these trays, if indeed I am going to go with these trays in the long term, which is debatable. Um, what I'm probably going to end up doing is putting a lot of components in these trays or the, these plain cardboard boxes. And then I will take these old Avalon Hill boxes and throw them away. I can, that's what I did before and it made selling the collection a pain, but um, it will be massively saving shelf space if I do it that way. Anyway, um, Quick look at the Traveler, because the Traveler collection is set. We have Classic Traveler 1, Classic Traveler 2, Classic Traveler 3, 4, Mega Traveler. This is Traveler 4th Edition, which was something of a fiasco. Um, and the first Mongoose, tra plus D20 Traveler, actually, which I always forget about. Um, and then the first edition of the Mongoose Traveler, which was ugly, but I think a perfectly viable game. And then the second edition of Mongoose Traveler, um, which is just as viable a game and which is much less ugly. We have Groups Traveler. I'm not 100% sure that everything is here. However, I do have absolutely everything that they ever published for Groups Traveler. Uh, and in fact, they, I did got the Groups 4th Edition Book 2. So, uh, the Traveler Interstellar Wars Book 4 Groups 4th Edition. Uh, that is not over here for some reason. I should fix that. Uh, down here we have miscellaneous sci-fi stuff. Blue Planet, this is everything we've released for that, as far as I'm aware. A couple of odds and ends, including the classic Star Wars game from West End Games. Star Trek, the role-playing game, which is pretty neat. I should do a video on that, too, because it's it's pretty neat. It's got some neat features. It's not, not straight, God damn it. And then we have 2300 AD. Um, I think I have everything released for that by GDW, but Mongoose has done some stuff, too, now, and I don't have any of that. And that is a... Thing I would like to remedy at some point. And then on the bottom, this collection's not really going any, anywhere either right now. Um, we have what I'm calling the Chaosium area, which is, I guess the first cube is, Rune, is Call of Cthulhu, and the second cube is RuneQuest and a couple odds and ends, and RuneQuest related things. So um, at some point, that is the new RuneQuest slipcase. I, I kind of got into buying slipcases, and it all started with this Pirates of Drenax thing. This is a glorious box set, by the way. But so is Masks of an Armothotep, and that RuneQuest box is pretty nice, too. So anyway, this has already run at least 10 minutes longer than I planned. 
Obviously, I need a new table. If you haven't watched it already, I have an unboxing video of this beauty um, earlier in the channel, so check that out. Um, so I hope to be able to bring you, I've got, you know, lifestyle change and location change and all that stuff, and I hope to be able to bring you some more videos on a more regular schedule from the new place. So if anybody has any questions about any of this or wants to see something specific pulled down off the shelf and at least talked about, uh, then please leave me a comment below. Like the video if you have enjoyed it. Stay tuned. More stuff is coming. I'll see you next time.